Today I'm going to show you five awesome things that I bet you did not know your iPad Air 5 could do. First off, I bet you've seen that viral TikTok that led to the viral tweet of somebody like picking up a picture and then dropping it onto their iPhone. Well, here's how you actually do that. And apologies for my voice, I'm kind of getting over being sick right now. So you can see it right here. I've got this really sweet social media post that I want to take and I want to drop it onto my phone. Look at that. Boom. Instantly done. It was like I picked it up and I dropped it. But what's really happening behind the scenes is Apple's handoff feature. So to do this, the gesture is three fingers scrunch on the iPad, then three fingers spread apart on the iPhone or the MacBook or whatever device you're trying to do this on. And so long as you have a canvas ready to go, like I've got the Notes app open here, it will then paste between the two because Apple's handoff feature is kind of like a mini cloud where you can copy and paste between all of your devices. So say you copy text from your iPhone and you want to send it onto your Mac, it's the same thing. It's just not as cool as the drop, like the physically picking up. But to do this, what you need to do is you make sure you have handoff turned on. So you can see here, we typed it in. We've got AirPlay and handoff. You have to have handoff turned on and that's the thing that sets up that little cloud between the devices for the copying and pasting. So you can see here, like look, it works back too. So we've got a new note here. So let's see here. What's up, everyone? Select all, copy, come over here, paste, and it works between the two. So yes, that feature is incredibly awesome and it works both ways. You don't just have to do that really sweet uh, tap and drop. Okay, for the next tip, I'm gonna show you universal control, which is one of the coolest things that Apple did with their latest version of iPad OS. So the way this works is it's a lot like handoff that we talked about earlier, except this time we're handing off with our Mac. So the way you do this is on your Mac, you go to displays. Once you're into displays, you just click on universal control and then you can set it up so you can allow your cursor and keyboard to move between any nearby Mac and iPad and it lets you push through the edge. So once you have these set up and you bring an iPad with this functionality next to it, it will automatically show up in your displays um, as an iPad. So you can see here, this is my main display for my Mac, but then here's the iPad and you can move this around wherever you want around the main display and it will treat it like a second monitor. If you've set up a second or a third monitor on Mac OS before, you'll notice that this is very similar to how this works. So I've got my iPad below here and now we can actually transition between my Mac and my iPad. So check that out. Can you see that? I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that. Hopefully I'm recording the screen right now. Um, but I can control my iPad or my Mac with my keyboard and my mouse that's only on the Mac. Now there are a few cool things that you can do with this right now, so check it out. So I've got, uh, let's see, we've got an audio file that we normally use for YouTube videos. We take this clickbait song, drag it down, move it, and it instantly copies and pastes. There's no, there's no airdrop, there's no nothing, there's no cables, it just automatically does that. But this actually works both ways. So let's take the picture we used earlier for that copy and paste magic, and let's move it from my iPad to my Mac. So you just click, you hold, you bring it up, and it's instantly copied. How cool is that. But that's not all you can do with universal control. Let's say you like your input style with the iPad better than you like your input style with the Mac. So I like this Magic Keyboard an awful lot. We've seen lots of videos about how much I like this. Let's say I want to control my Mac with the Magic Keyboard. So all I have to do is I move the mouse down to the iPad. So now the iPad's in control. I've got the Magic Keyboard in control. Now I just move the cursor back up to the Mac and now I am in control of my Mac with my iPad's magic keyboard and magic mouse. Displays, we can bring the display settings back up. You can control your Mac with your iPad. You can control your iPad with your Mac. Universal control is incredible. I think it's one of the most useful things that Apple's come up with recently. And I think it's gonna open up a whole lot of versatility with the iPad. The next tip is gonna be how to multi-screen. Now, one of the things that iPad gets beaten up on a lot for, and I have beaten them up on previous videos is, it's not as good for multi-screen as some other devices, but it does have it. And it's there's a few ways to do it. Some are easier, some are harder. So we open up Safari. Let's say I wanna look up two separate cameras at the same time. Like I wanna compare specs of cameras. So the first way we could do this is you see these three dots here at the top, you tap that, then you get a couple of options. If we wanna multi-screen, we just hit the middle one and it gives us, okay, it moves that screen out of the way. Now it's what other app do you wanna do? We're gonna do another Safari app. And we're gonna open up another website. So there you go, now you can multi-screen and multitask between two separate apps. It doesn't just have to be Safari. This can be whatever apps support this. But let's say you want a third app 
And this is how you do it the other way. You just bring up the sidebar down here. Say you want to have a text message conversation with him. You bring this into the middle here. Did you see how that kind of like shrunk? Then that gives you the option to now have three separate tasks up at the same time. So here's the other way to do that. Besides tapping on the three dots, you just bring up the doc. We want to have another website open. We bring up Safari, bring it over until it opens in the sidebar here. So now that's just another way to get to this. And then you can resize, make one bigger, one smaller. And then if you want to close, you have a couple of options. One, you just swipe, close the extra add on. But another way to do this is you just bring up all the active applications. You see them right here, you close it. Now, just the one is left open. Now, something that I think we've talked about in previous Mac videos, but I want to talk it here on iPad is quick note. Now, I have a very terrible short term memory, so I need to be able to take notes as quick as possible. Now, you don't need the Apple Pencil to make this work, but I find quick note works better with the Apple Pencil because it treats it more like a paper notebook where for my paper notebooks, I open them up, I start writing. Here, all you have to do is you take your pencil into the lower right hand corner, you scroll up. Now you've got a note that you can do anything with. Hello, everyone. My handwriting is terrible. Don't don't judge me based on my handwriting, but it's bad. Quick note is one of the best things Apple's ever done. It just it's so awesome to be able to quickly do that. And then when you're done, you hit done. You can do it with just your finger. You bring it up. You can move it around. You can make it bigger. You can make it smaller. Let's say we're done. We hit done. We go over to notes and then you can see in quick notes. There is our quick note. We can just take it. We can select it, select this one move, then we can move it over into whatever of our other note files that we want to do. So we moved our quick note over to notes. So if you have a normal structure or a normal workflow for your notes, you can easily take that quick note and move it into those. I love quick note. I'm telling you team, it is my absolute of all the tips I've shown you so far today. This is my favorite because it lets me really replace my paper notebook. And there's not a lot that can make me replace my paper notebook because I have such a terrible short term memory. Another one of the tips that I want to show you is how to set up background sounds. Now, one of the cool things about iPad, one of the cool things about all of the Apple ecosystem is how big of a push they have for accessibility. Different people have different reactions to stimuli. And I really like that Apple makes it as seamless as possible for as many people to comfortably enjoy their products. And one of those things you can do is you can set soothing background noise to use as you're using your iPad. So you go to settings, Let's go down here to accessibility, audio visual, and you can set up some background sounds just to be soothing. Or if you're trying to drown out some background noise, because sometimes I have some bad background noise around here, you can set this. So background sounds, can you hear that? You can choose from rain, bright noise, balance noise, ocean, dark noise, or stream. I personally like rain because I really love the sound of rain. You can increase the volume, decrease the volume. You can have this turned on when media is playing. Maybe you have a sensitivity to videos or a sensitivity to a way a creator creates their videos. You can turn this on. It's incredible. I love, I love, I love, I love how inclusive Apple is with all of their devices. But wait, I bet you thought we were done because I did say five, but here's a bonus sixth tip. Let's say you are like me, you've set up a home server and you're trying to get your iPad to connect with that so you can watch your movies, you can view your Plex, all of that stuff. Here's how you can take your iPad Air 5 and connect to your home server. Step number one is to go over to file. Step number two is to click on the three dots right here above it, connect to server. And so long as you know what your server is, it's really easy. You just type in, here's mine right here. We've already got all of my information. Hit next, connect, and now I am connected to my home server where I've got all of my work files done. Check it out. We can check out the best Mac Studio accessories. I bought the best accessories for the cheapest version. Of How cool is that? The iPad Air 5 is an incredibly versatile tool, and I hope these tips and tricks were able to help you get the most out of yours. And if you like this video and you want to see what are some of the best accessories, you see how to use the software. Now let's see how to build out a little bit around it for hardware stuff. You can find my accessory video by clicking right here. Click, 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 click. Thanks for watching.